So, without any further ado, we will start with our first talk, which is going to be presented by Dane Curry. He's from NASA Ames. He works on the Super Telescope. And his talk is the 30 meter telescope addressing common misconceptions and seeking common ground. Okay, so everybody can hear me. All right, uh, well, thank you very much for coming. Um, so, I'm going to be talking about um, common misconceptions and sort of common ground with the 30 meter telescope. Uh, to kind of give you a sense of the context, uh, for those of you who don't know, TMT has gone through a very, very lengthy uh, legal process, uh, spending a number of years. They first got a, um, a permit uh, in 2011 2012, protests in 2015, and in December 2016, the Hawaii Supreme Court vacated the uh, permit due to a procedural error by the Department of Land National Resources. And then in 2018, the Hawaii Supreme Court upheld a revised permit for this uh, the project. And then in 2019, we had protests again. And the most recent state is that um, the protesters are now off of the road. And you may have seen these guys outside this morning. Uh, so these are actually uh, most of the local community members who support the project and believe it's uh, good for the, for the islands. So this is a very challenging discussion uh, to have. And they're very uh, deep, uh, important uh, issues that deal with the legacy of colonialism in Hawaii. But to really get to these, part of the problem on the islands, but then we have to address a lot of factual issues too. So in addition to very broad questions about uh, sovereignty or sacredness, you also have specific factual claims to deal with. So every single one of the claims listed there in the bubbles are things that have been spread widely within Hawaii on social media and in the community. And it makes getting to the real core of these substantive issues that I think all of us care about much more difficult. So how do we try to get to that point? So what we've tried to do is set up a way to be able to discuss these within the community and then also online. And so we had an informational booth that ran at the Hilo Hawaii Farmers Market downtown every Saturday. I had to wake up, wake up way too early for any astronomer, and we had conversations with over 3,000 people while this was running. We also have social media groups that provide a sort of a safe space, a great place to be able to discuss this in more detail. So there come a couple of key issues that we've identified um, that kind of serve the way in which we can have um, discussions about the factual issues before we get to the, the deeper ones. First of all, like when you think of the 30 meter telescope, right? We have Keck, which is 10 meters. So naturally, we think that a 30 meter telescope is like three times larger. And it's for you know when you have a lack of information, sometimes you know people fear the worst and they fill that in with with their fears. And what we've been trying to be able to communicate is actually this: the uh, telescope doesn't scale this way. So that may be the perception. This is actually how TMT would look if we're placed on my hand, and you would have to use binoculars to be able to see it. it would not be seen in silhouette. And in fact, even though Gemini and Subaru are 8 meter telescopes, TMT is only about 20% taller. That's because it's a much faster focal ratio. Another issue we hear widely, actually, is that in terms of environmental impact, that TMT would actually have an adverse impact on the water for some reason. So those of you on the mainland may be very familiar with this. This, this actually is an issue. And in Hawaii, it's also an issue. Right? We have issues with uh, perhaps pesticide runoff or depleted uranium shell for the US military uses. So what we've been able to try to be able to communicate actually is that if nothing else, certainly a TMT is not going to have an impact on the water quality in this issue. And you can kind of understand this very simply that Hilo, Hawaii is the rainiest city in the United States. It's very dry in the summer. It would take forever to be able to for any ways to be able to get down into the level of the water, the water table. And that's uh, almost irrelevant in the first place because TMT is a zero waste facility. Additionally, it doesn't pose any um, uh, effect or any risk to uh, uh, endangered plants or animals. This is the vacu bug. It loves cinder cones. TMT is not being built on the cinder cone. And if it has no effect on this, uh, this species. And the third case is with uh, cultural practices and concerns. And this is also an issue in Hawaii. So you can have cases, for example, on Oahu, where Walmart literally built over a burial ground. Or in this case, where Whole Foods actually bought on that side that had over dozens of, of burial, burial sites in the, on the area. You can imagine Mauna Kea as a special, revered place could be a point where this would be a concern as well. Uh, but what we've actually been able to identify through very detailed, substantive archaeological evidence, there are no burials on Mauna Kea. The site itself has never been used uh, for cultural practices, identifying traditional customary. 
and it's actually, it doesn't interfere with practices elsewhere on the site. So that gives you a sense of the um, sort of factual background, but there's still these broad issues. And this is in, identified in the pamphlet that uh, Mayor Perry Kim has gone through, and there are two flashpoints for this. The first, with every single person we've talked to in Hawaii, those who have questions about the project or are sort of lawfully or against, some say sovereignty is the reason, some say sacredness is the reason, literally 100% of the people we talk to say one of their concerns is that TMT stands for too many telescopes. And so you can imagine, uh, since 1968, we have a proliferation of telescopes now up to 13. And so with TNT, actually, they're necessitating the decommissioning of five, we'll be down to a total of nine telescopes. And the second is broader issues in terms of home city lands, and this is something I can get into later. Where basically the idea is that a part of being able to be able to address this issue as a community is to deal with these broader issues that maybe not necessarily have anything to do with astronomy itself, but have to do with the type of land that astronomy is on. So that's, uh, I guess, I'm out of time. If you have questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, and I'm going to ask you to use the microphone if you do have a question. And then there's some seats up in front. A few people in the back would like to come in and sit down. Please come up here and sit down. Questions? Questions? Hands up by anybody? No questions? <laughs> Okay, well, well, I'll ask a question then. So, um, how do you, when you were doing these farmers markets and things, yes. what was your impression of, of the way most of the people were feeling about what was going on? Sure, I mean, it's possible this is a selection effect, but uh, by far the vast majority of the people we talked to support the project. But I think it's really important to understand that maybe the reasons that astronomers might support a telescope or that's not necessarily the same as the same reason that people the community support the, tele the telescope. You know, maybe the right way to think of it is in terms of the way that uh, four general loaders is to some communities in Michigan or Planet You know, they can be identified as a way to have a good, stable job, to have a family, to be proud of something, and it's something that's um, exciting. So even, for example, Subaru, you know, has over 100 employees, only 25% of them are astronomers. A lot of people are tech, System in, they got the degrees at Hawaii Community College, at UH Hilo. You know, this is personal in a way, in a way to them. They kind of see this issue, see the sort of practical nuts and bolts and benefits of this project um, emphasize more than, you know, a pretty much science case that we do with the uh, astronomy. Okay. Oh, we have a question from the audience. Over to the Hi, um, I was wondering if you could walk us through the rationale behind decommissioning some of the other telescopes um, and if that would actually sort of decrease the effect of the telescopes on the mountain or if that's sort of just an effort to appease the yeah, Very good. So I guess the way it has been explained to me before is that some, some people in Hawaii didn't necessarily have a problem with one telescope or two or three, but we built, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, 13 times again. So there's this fear that even if these, the community says, well, this is the last telescope, there's a feeling that, well, we will just keep building, that there will be another telescope, another one on top of that. And so as a byproduct of TMT's permit, um, in the, with the, the policy of the, U, of the university, TMT is the last new telescope site. Now, in terms of where there was actually less than the impact, it actually opens up new planes near the summit, which are really important for some cultural, cultural practices. A lot of those telescopes also do have different way systems. For example, they have uh, uh, perhaps some cesspools. Uh, they have different ways of dealing with their, um, um, you know, their, their, their impact. So because TMT, for example, is a zero waste facility, you think of the net, net amount of physical waste that is, going, that is going to the mountain, even if it doesn't impact anything, the actual number of that will end up decreasing with the total decrease of some number of these, old, these older telescopes. Okay, thank you very much. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Let's thank our speaker again.